Cells are the smallest unit of life, and on the surface of virtually all cell types is an antenna-like structure, the cilium. The Department of Biology at the University of Copenhagen has helped to show that these cilia play an important role in the ability of the cells to carry out their functions properly. They act as a kind of antenna, telling the cells how organs should be formed during development of the embryo and how wounds should be healed. These cilia are the cell's own biological GPS system, and without them, we would perish. A cell is able to maintain its own life. The cell has a metabolism and can absorb nutrients, convert them into energy, and excrete the remaining waste. Located on the surface of all cells are receptors that receive a variety of different signals from the environment. The signals include hormones and growth factors that tell the cells whether or not they should divide, transform into new cell types, change their shape, move around, adjust their metabolism or die. And these processes are essential for a new embryo to develop properly and for tissues and organs to function correctly in adults. So if the cells do not respond properly to signals from the environment, it could lead to severe deformities in the fetus and serious disorders in adults. In the cell nucleus is the genetic material, DNA, which controls the function of the cells and the entire body. Because the DNA contains the genes that are either activated or turned off by the receptors that pick up signals from the cell's environment. On the surface of the cells in the body are small hair-like structures called cilia. In some cells there could be several hundreds of these entities which function as motile units, for example in the airway system where they transport dust particles, bacteria and other foreign objects away from the bronchi and nasal cavity. These cilia are an ancient innovation going back more than 1.5 billion years. They first arose in a single cell animal, where the cilia allowed the cell to move around in an aqueous environment, for example allowing them to find food or swim away from poisons. We also know of cilia from sperm cells, where a single cilium, also known as a flagellum, acts as a tail which the sperm cell uses to swim towards the egg. And then there is another type of cilia, the so-called primary cilium. These cilia do not actively move and they are formed as a single antenna-like structure on the surface of nearly all cell types in our body, including stem cells, muscle cells, brain cells, fat cells, connective tissue cells, and so on. The primary cilia play a huge role in the ability of cells to receive signaling molecules that control the function of the cells to regulate the formation of organs and tissues during embryonic and fetal development, and in maintaining the function of tissues in adults. A small cut on your finger is a good starting point for understanding how important it is to receive signaling molecules correctly. Our cells need to be able to orient themselves with what is going on in the body. When, for example, you get a cut in your finger, skin and connective tissue cells need to be able to divide and move into the wound to heal it. But how does this take place? How do the cells know what to do and when to do it? And how do they get the message that something has happened? Our research at the Department of Biology has helped to map this out. We've discovered that primary cilia function as GPS antenna that pick up injury signals in the wound using unique receptors and then tell in which direction and at what speed the cells have to move in order to close the wound. This is a very complicated process. Our experiments in the laboratory show that the ability of primary cilia to detect the danger signals is lightning fast. They receive the information through the receptors in the cilia, which then immediately send on the information to the cell, whereby the cell changes from lying still to be able to move. Here we are looking at an artificial wound where connective tissue cells are being grown in a dish in the laboratory. Now, one of the damage signals is added to the dish. This calls to the cells and stimulates them to change shape more quickly and cause them to drift 
with increasing speed towards the wound in order to close it. If you look closer at the migrating cells, you can clearly see how the primary cilium in each cell points in the same direction as the movement of the cell, thus acting as a GPS for the spatial orientation of the cell towards the scene of the accident. So, if the primary cilia do not form properly, or if they lose their sensory capacity, then the cells will not be able to orient themselves correctly and will move around in random directions, as if they were blind. To demonstrate this in living tissue, we studied with our collaborators how wounds heal in laboratory mice. In these experiments, the mice were sedated, after which a small injury was inflicted on the animal. We then followed the healing of the wound over a week. In healthy mice with normal primary cilia, the wound healed nicely, but in mutant mice, which have a small defect in the primary cilia, the healing process took much longer. Similarly, our research group has a strong focus on understanding how errors in signaling through primary cilia cause severe birth defects and life-threatening diseases in adults. As an example, we now know that defects in primary cilia lead to heart defects, which affect approximately 1% of all newborns. And recent research has shown that defects in primary cilia are linked to a wide variety of other birth defects and diseases like bone and brain abnormalities, cancer, obesity, diabetes, cyst formation in inner organs, as well as cognitive disorders including schizophrenia and possibly bipolar disorders and Alzheimer's. In the context of development, our experiments have shown that primary cilia help explain when stem cells form new cell types that are involved in formation of complex tissues and organs. This has given us the opportunity to understand how signaling in primary cilia allows stem cells in the laboratory to either form new nerve cells or develop heart muscle cells. Here you see how we can get stem cells to form clusters of small beating mini hearts in the laboratory and our research shows that this formation of heart muscle cells relies on signaling through the primary cilia. So if the cilia are defective then there is chaos in the developing fetus resulting in severe deformities. It is therefore important that we understand how primary cilia work so that we can eventually better diagnose and treat patients with cilia defects. What we are now researching and trying to understand much better is how the entire complex interaction works. How do the primary cilia form? How are receptors positioned in the cilia? How do the cilia transduce the signaling into the cell? And finally, how might different signaling systems collaborate inside the cilia in order to give the correct signal to the cell to divide, move or form a new cell type. Our research will help identify how deformities and diseases occur and it is our hope that this could ultimately lead to a better diagnosis and treatment of many diseases that we are currently unable to cure. <music>